Next is thermal equilibrium and zero thalo. We are developing the concept of the zero thalo based on the idea of thermal equilibrium. And we have already mentioned the concept of thermal equilibrium as uh, that a system should be in thermal equilibrium when all its parts are at the same temperature and also the system and the surroundings are at the same temperature. And this thermal equilibrium is a state achieved by two or more systems after they have been in communication with each other through a diathermic wall. So when you are keeping two systems in contact, one at a higher temperature and the other at a low temperature, we know that uh, the hot body becomes cool by a reduction in its temperature and the cold body will increase will have an increase in its temperature and after some time both will be attaining the same temperature and when they are keeping in contact through a diathermic wall that means through that wall heat transfer is possible <laughs> so then you can see that or you can say that these two systems are in thermal equilibrium and the zero law of thermodynamics is related to thermal equilibrium of systems. And the statement of zero law is two systems in thermal equilibrium with the third system are in thermal equilibrium with each other. That means you are considering three systems, say A, B, and C. And we are saying that this A is in thermal equilibrium with the C. And also B is in thermal equilibrium with C. Then clearly A and B will be in thermal equilibrium. And when you are thinking about this, this is a very basic law. Everyone can actually derive such a law. But at the starting stage, this was a very powerful tool for the development of thermodynamics. And we can explain this by using this figure. So, you can see that this is a diathermic wall and this is an adiabatic wall. So, if A and B are each in thermal equilibrium with C, that means we are not mentioning anything about A and B. This A and C will be in thermal equilibrium after when they are keeping by separating a diathermic wall and similarly B and C will attain thermal equilibrium. So what now you are saying is that if you put this diathermic wall here then only then also this A and B will be in thermal equilibrium that means there will not be any change in their temperatures. So if two systems are in thermal equilibrium with the third system separately, you can say like that separately, then those both systems are in thermal equilibrium with each other. And this is zero law of thermodynamics. And now we have to mention a term which is very familiar to us, equation of state. And an equation of state is a mathematical function relating the appropriate thermodynamic coordinates of, the, of a system in equilibrium. So at equilibrium, you can have the thermodynamic coordinates of the system that can be either intensive or extensive. And there will be a relation or mathematical relation connecting that particular state of the system which you are calling as the equation of state and uh, you are already familiar with uh, one equation of state and that is 
the ideal gas equation PV equals nRP. It is a equa it is an equation which is also which is considered which can be considered as the equation of state of an ideal gas. And now we can have the concept of temperature and heat. <laughs> These two terms are very much familiar to us. And actually, though there is a relation connecting heat and temperature, actually they are separate entities. But by mistake, sometimes we will uh, use the term temperature uh, where we have to use the term heat. That is a common mistake made by us. And this is a literal definition. These two. That means temperature, measure of hotness. And heat you can consider as energy in transit. Transit, mean, transit means a type of motion. That means it is a type of energy which can be flown or which is energy which is flowing. And in olden days, uh, it was thought that heat is flowing as a particular form of uh, particles and that uh, flow you were termed as the caloric. So, we have temperature is a measure of hotness and heat is energy in transit. But these two are not scientific definitions. And now, we are trying to define temperature based on some uh, thermodynamic properties. So, you can see that temperature of a system is a property that determines whether or not a system is in thermal equilibrium with other systems. We have already mentioned that if A and B are in thermal equilibrium, then definitely A and B are at the same temperature. That is a basic definition of thermal equilibrium. There is no temperature difference. If A and B are not in thermal equilibrium, that means there is a temperature difference between them. So, temperature determines whether or not a system is in thermal equilibrium with other systems. So, if you are saying that two systems are at the same temperature, you can say so it is clear that they are in thermal equilibrium and if two systems are not in same temperature which means that they are not in thermal equilibrium for several systems which are in thermal equilibrium with each other we can write the equation of state as we are just writing as uh, you have a particular system at a temperature, say T, pressure P1, volume B1. And the second one, it is a function of, you, you actually you have to write it as a mathematical function. That is why we have, we have written it as phi1 of P1, B1. And actually you have to mention temperature also. But for all systems, the temperature is same. That means you can say that there is a particular function for all systems. That means all systems are at the same temperature. So there should be an equation for T for all of these. So for the first one, phi1 one of P1, V1. Second one, phi2, a function of P2 and V2. The For the second system, it's pressure and volume. Third system, it's pressure and volume. And you can see that or, or if you have a number of systems, for all of them, that function is equal to temperature. Something which is defining temperature, if you can write from there, so all will be same. And now what about this equation? If phi1 of P1 V1 not equal to phi2 of P2 V2, I have just mentioned that phi1 of P1 V1 is equal to phi2 of P2 V2 only when they are at the same temperature, which means that these two are not at the same temperature. 
for two systems such that this phi1 of p1 d1 not equal to phi2 of p2 v2. The two systems are not in thermal equilibrium. And when they are not in thermal equilibrium, what happens? There will be flow of energy from one system to other till they attain equilibrium. And here we are mentioning about the thermal equilibrium. That means uh, until then those two systems are at the same temperature. Till then there will be flow of heat. And this is known to you as always heat will be naturally flowing from higher temperature to lower temperature. And this flowing energy is known as heat. So you can see that uh, heat is the a flow of energy between two systems which are not in thermal equilibrium. So, if there is a thermal equilibrium between two systems, they, or, or both of them will be at the same temperature and there is no flow of heat between them. Heat flows from a region of higher temperature to the region of low temperature. This is a natural way of heat flowing and there can be flow of heat from lower temperature to higher temperature like uh, in your refrigerators, air conditions, etc. That is another type or another case where some work has to be done that you, ha you have to uh, discuss in your next chapter. So, heat flows from a region of higher temperature to a region of lower temperature and a temperature gives a level of the heat intensity. So, if temperature difference is large, there will be more heat flow. As an example, you can see that suppose you have two systems, system A and system B. So, heat is exchanging between them. Uh, this is marked with the blue color and this with the red color. This is known to you because in your taps normally blue for cold water and red for hot water. That is why this a hot one is we have marked hot one means this 20 degrees Celsius is not such a hot but a higher temperature you have marked as red and this as blue. So there is heat is exchanged and normally this heat is exchanged from this higher temperature to lower temperature. So temperature of the hotter body will decrease and that of colder body will increase. So, if both of them are of same mass, you can see that after the heat flow is over, this will be at 15 degrees Celsius and this also will be at 15 degrees Celsius. So, when mass is, uh, when two systems have the same mass, <laughs> the resulting temperature is the average of those two temperatures. And if the mass is different, this is not the case. Suppose this has a larger mass and this has some a mass different from that of the system B. This will be attained a temperature between 10 degree and 20 degree Celsius. When two systems are of different mass, you can only uh, have an idea that uh, the final state will be a temperature which is greater than the cool one and less than the hot. And next is a thermodynamic process. Thermodynamic state of a system is specified by thermodynamic coordinates. We have already mentioned that thermodynamic state can be represented with thermodynamic coordinates. Any change in the thermodynamic coordinates of the thermodynamic system causes a change in the state of the system. So, a particular state is characterized by its thermodynamic coordinates. So, 
a particular temperature, particular volume, particular pressure, etc. If any quantity is changing, that means it is not the state which was earlier. So, the state of the system can have changed, that you can see. It has changed. And the change in thermodynamic coordinates of a system is called a thermodynamic process. And there can be so many reasons for the change in thermodynamic coordinates. The change in thermodynamic coordinates of a system is called a thermodynamic process. And we have earlier mentioned that if that change is infinitesimally small, you are calling such a process as a quasi-static process. While discussing the topic of thermodynamic equilibrium, we have mentioned that quasi-static process. Only slight, infinitesimally small change. So, the change in thermodynamic coordinates of a system is called a thermodynamic process. And the change can be of different types. Say, if one quantity is remaining constant, other quantities can be changed. Or all quantities can be changed. Like, etc. And based on, you can classify the thermodynamic processes as the types of processes. They are isothermal process, a term known to you, adiabatic process, isobaric process, isochoric process, cyclic process, reversible process and irreversible process. And our next aim is to define all these. Uh, of course, we can discuss some examples for them and we have to consider what are the equation of state for such processes and the, that we can consider in next class. Okay, thank you.